Hi everybody, welcome back, and if this is your first time, welcome. My name is Max Sadat, and today we're going to be watching an episode of The Norden with uh, LAPD police captain Peter Whittingham, I think, uh, and he's going to three different countries to look at how they do the whole policing thing differently than America. Enjoy. As always, if there's an ad, I'll skip it unless it's my own, uh, in which case I won't be seeing it. And the first part is not in English. I know not all of you have English as your first language, but not all of it is, and there's going to be subtitles for all of it. So don't be put off by that. Let's go. Hej och välkommen till The Norden. I den här serien granskar vi den omtalade nordiska välfärden bara att vi gör det genom en utomstående, neutral, icke-nordisk besökares ögon. Idea Frågan för är show. hur det samhälle vi nordbor egentligen sist och slutligen har byggt upp. I det här avsnittet ska Peter Whittingham till vardags polis i Los Angeles, glasses. USA få se hur den nordiska polisen jobbar. Och bland annat lära sig att de norska kollegorna, ja, de jobbar obeväpnade. So, some of, some of police in different countries work without guns. Does that mean that some countries, their police work without guns, or some police in those countries work without guns? I assume that some of the police have guns, or they have access to guns, but not on their person. Like if there's an emergency, it's at the station or something. Like in a case, I don't know. If somebody knows, let me... Let me also know. Customer? We call them a customer, yes. <laughs> we are, that's what we do. It's just difficult for me to wrap my mind around yeah, as a police course. officer. Oh, of course it is, yes. Uh, the last time we fired a gun, <laughs> I know it was last Friday. <laughs> last Friday, he shot his gun. <laughs> that's crazy. Because that's at a person, right? He wasn't at a gun range. He's laughing about shooting at a person last Friday. I don't hate the USA guy, it's not him. USA och de nordiska har i proportion ungefär lika stor poliskår. Och till stora delar rätt likna. The police forces? Oh, proportionally though. Okay. <laughs> so there's, there are as many cops to citizens there as there are in the US. I was going to say, you guys have that many? <laughs> Okay. I get it. Vi talar stöld, skadegörelse, fortkörning, fylla, Same familjevåld, crimes. narkotika för att nu nämna Domestic de vanliga. Violence, drugs, all that. Yep. En stor signifikant skillnad finns det go. i varje fall. Nämligen det här med yes. vapenhanteringen. För bara under de första månaderna av till exempel 2012 avfyrade polisen i Look Los Angeles fler skott i tjänst en samtliga nordiska poliskårar tillsammans under hela året. Holy Var det shit. för att de verkligen måste göra det eller för att det nu helt enkelt bara blev så? Och hur ställer sig polisen här till sina maktbefogenheter? Vi har bjudit in en polis från nämnda Los Angeles Police Department i Norden för really att upsetting. diskutera polisiära likheter och framförallt skillnader. The van, so first of all, one big difference is uh, in America we don't drive minivans, or at least some of us do, but not our cops. <laughs> it takes a confident man or woman to, to drive a minivan and then insist that you have authority over someone other than your kids in your I'm minivan. I'm Peter Whittingham. Uh, I'm a police officer, police captain with a police department in Los Angeles. I have been in this business of law enforcement uh, since 1974, I have um, I joined the Jamaica Police Department as a young man in 1974, and then I migrated to United States in Jamaica um, in late '83. No, yeah, that's what he just said, right? You Jamaica, and then he moved to LA. When somebody is out Hold there, on. Uh, police department in Los Angeles. I have been. Yes. Oh, no, he was talking about Jamaica, Jamaica. I thought he meant he was in New York. You just never know when somebody okay. is out there trying to. That's not interesting. Not only prevent you from serving, but prevent you from going home to your family. I wonder what his experience was in Jamaica as a police officer and how that compares to his experience now. The way that he's bringing it up makes it sound like it's the same, basically. I don't want to assume that, but that's what it sounds like. And now he's saying 
you don't know if somebody's going to prevent you from arresting them, but also going home. That, that's the, the life of a Los Angeles police officer. If I only point my weapon at, at someone when I am endangered. All right, I'm going to say it. He looks like Morpheus, right? Like from the Matrix, he looks exactly like Morpheus. And I don't mean he looks like the actor that plays Morpheus. I mean like he looks like Morpheus. It's very easy to, to say that, you know, it's us against them. Mm -hmm. when, when, you, when you think that you're fighting for your life. That's something too, guys, that I have tried to at least allude to, if not say outright, but police don't just kill people because they're evil, right? It's not that, it's just not that simple. It's not just good and evil and those cops are evil. Sometimes police officers make mistakes because they felt that they were doing the right thing because they felt like their life was in danger, you know? Um, not gonna, I'm just gonna make a generic example, but it's something that has happened. Somebody's running away from the cop uh, they didn't know if they had a weapon or not. The person reaches into their pocket and then turns around and the cop shoots them. Turns out the person was, you know, I don't know, maybe grabbing drugs out of their pocket to throw away or so, who knows, but they didn't have a gun on them, no weapon even. So the cop just killed an unarmed person, but it's not as simple as saying, yeah, he's just going around shooting unarmed people. No, he really thought his life was in danger. So it's complicated. It's not, it's not fair to just say that, that, u.s police are bad people it's it's there are bad people that are police officers but there's wonderful people that are police officers and uh i'm not gonna say like well most of the time this or most of the time that it's awful when anybody gets killed um when they shouldn't have been shot at all if they're unarmed or whatever but i just i want to make that clear that it's not just evil police all the all the time Resan börjar i Vasa, en stad på ungefär 60 000 invånare. Peter han får besöka det stökigaste området i stan. Och vår gäst reagerar genast på den finländska kollegans ordval. Our customers, customers, so customers, we put them here. Uh, really? Yes. And uh, you call them a customer? We call them a customer. And he's dead serious too. I thought it was a joke at first. Uh, okay. We, we call him suspect. Yes. If you call somebody a customer, you want to treat them with respect, right? Like, that's the thing, too. I talked about it in the prison guard video, but, you know, when people get arrested, right, suspect, sometimes the cops know that they did it. They, saw, they caught him with drugs on him, whatever. But, uh, well, drug addiction is a mental illness. But my point is, like, a lot of times they don't know. They are just suspects. But suspects in America are treated like criminals that have been sentenced by a court and have been found guilty. And I, I just don't think, like, it seems like these cops, from just what they've said so far, very little, because I'm talking so much, they don't view people that they're arresting or detaining uh, as guilty. Guilty until proven innocent, which, you know, you hear growing up in the U.S., innocent until proven guilty, but that's just not the case. Interesting. A taser. Okay, sir. okay that's, that's uh, similar to what we have. And do you have? Okay, that's uh, OC spray and uh, mace taser. Uh, 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 ASP. Those hurt. Yes. Telescopic yeah, batons well. are painful though. Uh, and uh, how many handcuffs do you carry? Two. Two handcuffs. Okay. That's similar to. Um, so everything but a gun, or, basically. Well, what's that and on this? Is your hip? standard uniform? Yes, standard uniform. So and these guys the, have guns. Uniform, we, we all, all have naturally the bulletproof. Or is that just the taser vest. on his leg? Yeah. Is that the taser? But how often do you have a shooting? Uh, in Finland, if we think about the whole country in Finland, so taser. Uh, should I say less than five times taser. each year in whole Finland? Is this his gun or does this guy just have his taser on a different Russia? leg? Uh, no, 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 no. Or we have had, but it's maybe for 10, 20 years ago. Really? Mm. Well, I've had a, a lot of situations to have drawn my weapon. I have used a weapon since I didn't send the form. I'm very, very familiar with, uh, with, um, with my weapon. Oh, no. So my brother once told me when I was young, I had an infatuation with knives and I still kind of do, to be honest, but not because I like to cut people uh, with knives. I just like, I just think knives are pretty and I think it's, they're cool. Um, 
But when I was young, I think when he asked me, like, why do you have a knife or whatever, I was like, to protect myself. I was just a young, dumb kid. I didn't have the words to say. I just think they're pretty. Um, and he, he said so basically something like, you're not going to get cut with a knife unless you bring a knife to a fight, basically. Something like that. Like, another person is not that maybe they would just fight you with your, their hands, but because you're bringing out a knife, now you're going to get cut. And he didn't mean by your own knife. He meant that now this person has justification to cut you, that sort of thing. And I kind of feel the same way about guns. Uh, and I'm not anti gun. That's not my stance on, on guns. I don't just think guns are evil. Uh, but sometimes I wonder, and I'm, I guess I'm sure that it happens that a situation is escalated to the point of gun violence when maybe it didn't have to be that. Uh, but telescopic batons hurt. I think I'd probably rather get shot in the shin than <laughs> hit in the shin with the telescopic baton. That's not true. So he's out with Lasse, som sitter i bilen här, har just bränt förbi rött ljus i korsningen och polisen har följaktligen stannat honom. Hur skulle du själv uppleva att bli stannad på äkta LAPD vis? Jesus, just watching Paul his gun. <laughs> vi ska återkomma till det om en alldeles liten stund. Men nu ska vi fundera på vem som egentligen väljer yrket polis. Interesting. I Umeå träffar vi Manda. Jag heter Manda. Jag är 23 år gammal och går här. So is that Amanda? Is that, you know, we say Amanda and they say Manda? Like, uh, what is, there's a bunch of names that are very similar. And I'm not saying that it's really Amanda. I mean, like, you know, there's lots of names all over the world that we pronounce differently. So is that the equivalent to Amanda? På polisutbildningen i Umeå. Amerikanska Umeå. polisen. Ja, det är ju det man ser i tv, på filmer. De är lite mer offensiva framåt. Some of their Och så sen är de här serierna heels? som springer runt med Do our female police officers wear high heels? Up. Do our male police officers wear high heels? Welcome! <laughs> Vid polisakademin i Los Angeles räcker polisutbildningen sex månader. Yeah, six months in LA. How long have you been here at the academy? Four terms. So four, it's four two terms. years now. Two years? Yes. And I thought six months was a long time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Uh, so it's about 17. There's been a lot of questions in the comments about uh, police training in America. I'm going to have a video at some point comparing a lot of different countries and how what training their police are expected or have to go through before they are on the street with a badge and a gun or maybe not a gun uh but yeah the difference there six months and i don't know that all places do six months i mean lapd is a pretty active city so lapd la is a pretty active city but i would be amazed if if the cops in my area did any more than like three months Utbildningen i Umeå, but that's a guess. I can't say. Förvånad över den, ja, avslappnade approachen i korridorerna. <laughs> In the Los Angeles you know it's funny. Academy. Wait, this is a class though, right? It is expected on day one, as you. You report for duty in your suit and tie. Yeah, that you report for report, <laughs> report for duty in your suit and tie. What I was going to say is, you know, it's funny. This place looks like the work release place I stayed at. God damn it, I'm so bad at this. There, this these police officers being trained. It looks like the criminals that I sat with, me being one of these people at work release. We would have a really nice, sweet woman or a you know a really tough man uh teaching us about like social skills or something right and people would have their their tank tops on and their gold necklaces and just like these people are maybe slightly more welcomed than we were but <laughs> these are police officers or in training regardless in the los angeles police academy it is expected on day one as you you report for duty in your suit and tie that you see yourself as now in a change environment you're now a los angeles police recruiting training i was looking in the classroom and there was a, a group of students in the classroom and yeah, that hottie up front with the good arms ordinary everyday clothes and tank tops 
genom ett av fönstren. Ser han till och med skägg? A beard. They're Gross. They're Who would ever? Beard. Is that not common in uh, No, LA? not at all. <laughs> no. Can you have a beard? Uh, no. No, it's like in the military here in Sweden. Yeah. In LA, you have to be clean shaven. So this is what that's what I've always wondered is you know like there it's like here's how I feel about it. Who gives a fuck if my police officers I'm supposed to swear less now that I have ads by the way. That's going to take some getting used to. Who cares if police officers show up with a tie on or if they have a beard or not? I don't get it. I don't get it. Like that's not important. Who is spending time deciding those rules? Because those rules don't make them better cops. It doesn't make, you know, crime happen less. And people are like, he, you see how seriously he feels about this? He laughed when he talked about using his gun last Friday on a person. And he's upset that somebody has a beard. He's not upset. He's asking, but he's like needed to be like a beard. It's just crazy, man. Who cares about that? Every day. Every day. Yes. The casualness of the environment did not in, give the impression to what I'm used to in terms of police academy. På slutbanan blir det där en allvar. Did he miss? Did he hit it at all? Are you ready? I'm yeah. sure he's good. Yeah. I just didn't see any. Uh, okay. What is this? Okay. It's uh, like this. A harder. You hit it, hitting like a girl. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, good. That's it. That's it. That's all cop hits. Okay, good. And then good. you have to good. back off. What, 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 what motivated Crazy. you to become a police officer? Good question. I have always liked people and I like working with people. Uh, uh, what? Did you hear that? What motivated you to become a police officer? I like people and I like working with people. I would say that probably half of the police that I interacted with, and this is in my area and it's police that I interacted with. So this is not a generalization of all cops, okay? We're police officers because my daddy was a cop, that kind of thing. Or I like guns or uh, they hate criminals. That was frustrating. There was actually somebody at work release, which most of the people at work release were amazing, the, the employees and the guards. And she hated criminals. And it wasn't like something terrible had happened to her family or something because of a criminal, like a, a crime was committed against them. She just hated them. So we got the brunt end of it because she just could basically do whatever she wanted when it was her shift. We just knew we were going to be miserable. I'm sure there's American cops that just love people and want to help people. And I'm, and I'm not, I'm saying that like, I'm not sure. I'm certain that there are American police officers that just want to help people and love people. But what an answer. Okay. And I think it's important with uh, what's wrong and what's right, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, that's what I was telling um, earlier. That, that, that was my motivation as well. What, oh. what, what month were you born? Let's talk about that. What month? April. Uh, okay. So you're Aryan. Yeah. Is it, oh, is so he's... A, yeah, okay. And star you're signs. Sagittarian. I was very impressed. I did uh, not expect that from this guy. Manda, and I could tell as she explained her value Astrology. system and the reasons why she really want to be a police officer. Oh, that, get your uh, hand off her. <laughs> we have a good cop in the making. Morpheus. It's not the Matrix. You can't make up your own rules. Pretty city. Det har blivit Salt. fredag kväll. <laughs> It's a whole store dedicated to salt. You believe that? Det har blivit fredag kväll. Folk ska ut och slå runt i staden Umeå. Umeå. We have been here now for maybe approximately 30 minutes and um, the interesting thing is that I haven't seen one police officer. I haven't heard one siren on a Friday night in... Okay, but he's American and speaks English. It might not be his first language, but what did he just call it? I haven't heard one siren. One siren. 
That's not how we say that. He can say it however he wants to, especially now that he's, you know, a world traveler. But that's not Siren. Siren. On a Friday night in, in one police officer. I haven't heard one, one siren, siren. <laughs> on a Friday night in, in downtown. That's remarkable. You could tell that the people walking around were not looking over their shoulders. Yeah, that's in cool. In fear of somebody trying to rob them. I now, I don't know. Okay, so like this area that we're in, let me click back just a little bit so you can, like, if... There are places like this in the U.S., obviously. I mean, this kind of looks like downtown where I live. Uh, if there were a bunch of people around and stuff, and, like, you know, it's kind of the prime of the night, like 7 to 9 p.m. or whatever, people aren't going to be looking over their shoulders either. Um, you would definitely see a lot of cops because a lot of police would be arresting, you know, drunk people walking around, drunk drivers, breaking up bar fights. It's not awful, but, like, it's an annoyance because there's so many police and you're worried about your behavior. So it's odd because... When people are looking over their shoulders in places like this where I'm at, typically you're not looking for criminals. Like, is someone going to rob me? You're looking for police. <laughs> Am I going to get, uh, you know, detained because they think I'm being too loud when I'm just yelling with my friends or having a good time or whatever? Um, I mean, it's been years since I've had that experience, but it wasn't because I'm a drug addict. It was because that's what people are doing. They're at the bar and they're afraid of cops when they leave the bar. They're not afraid of criminals. But yeah, if you're in an area where you're off by yourself and you're, you know, you're walking down back alleys, you're going to be more nervous in America, I think. Um, well, I can't say that. But, but if anybody, I think, from where I'm at, in a, you know, in a city like this where there's people everywhere and the lights are still on, we're not going to be nervous either, except about the cops. In fear of somebody trying to rob them. I couldn't find a police officer anywhere. <laughs> Well, uh, we don't actually see much of the force oh, uh, at all in uh, the smaller villages. Uh, uh, really? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have them for, what is it, one hour on Monday. That's <laughs> yeah, how long so we have. Like that. <laughs> yeah. We really? used to have yeah. four cops stationed uh -huh. in our town, and uh, two of them were on, uh, were off to another place uh -huh. to help uh, those guys. The other two were on vacation. <laughs> So Almost we didn't have time. anything oh, really? for uh, yeah. three months or so. So uh, basically, we, li we live in uh, almost all this town. Uh, when was the last time you talked years. to a police officer? Yeah. Uh, several years ago. <laughs> 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 yeah, have you seen police around? Maybe one time, but... <laughs> <laughs> so you don't see a lot of police around no, here? No, but it's also safe, so uh, it's uh, not it's really needed here. Mm. I, I like to see walking police officers, not not a young just. See, that's the thing, though, is like, we know that this country has the same amount of crime. Statistically, it does. Obviously, not the same, like, uh, numerically the same, but percentage-wise, basically the same amount of crime as the U.S. does. But that cop presence that I was mentioning earlier doesn't make you feel safer. It makes you feel more nervous. Why are there cops everywhere? Are they watching me? You know, and then there's a lot of, like, ticketing happening there's a lot of citations and people worried about getting in trouble for stuff that isn't even really criminal they're like getting arrested for having bad etiquette like being drunk in public and yelling but like it doesn't need to be an arrest it could be a ride home it could be a you have to take an uber or a taxi home you can't be out like this that sort of thing I, there's just a lot of different ways that the police can can be involved in and active in helping their community without just being yes i am the police and i arrest people there's just a lot of ways to do it all of this i'm saying in the back of my head like knowing there are good cops that do it the right way so please don't hear me saying that all cops are bad in the cars you know uh, oh, okay you see but if you're walking people could talk to him and mm. then just uh, discuss that's nice. and you don't have a he chance to be able to, to talk, talk to, to the police officers do you that, that's it quite sometimes but they usually are in cars what do you think your police officers should focus on here. that would be of interest to you? Uh, I, I'm not sure they're doing a wonderful job, actually. They are? <laughs> okay. I'm not actually sure what they're doing, but uh -huh. they're doing... See, I feel like he, Morpheus, feels like there's not enough cops around, so these people are really missing out. And the, 
the people feel like there's no cops around because they don't need to be because they did such a good job. Mm, good job. I mean, what, what, what kind of crime occurs around here? Uh, well, there was a murder here. Thanks for talking to me. <laughs> no okay. That's it. Take care. That's, that's where they're ending the interview. There was a murder. Okay, thank you so much. Stay safe. <laughs> that weird ass music. Tillbaka till bilkontrollen tidigare. Vi hade alltså en fiktiv situation där chauffören Fic- har kört okay, the, the fictitious situation earlier police. where he was Nu ska vi se hur finländsk you know, pulling over another cop. Tacklar situationen. God kväll. God kväll. Märkte du vad hände där vid korsningen? 200 meter bakåt. Ja, det blinkar inte mig Nej, det var lite rött ljus. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. Okej. Okay. Ja. Ugh, it makes me anxious to see this, even though I know it's fake and it's in a different country. What was your, your reason for opening the door? That's why there was water in his glasses. Door, I can immediately see much more than from the window. And then if the situations uh, change, I can use the door as a shield. If he, for example, decides to attack from the car, so mm-hmm. can, I, can use, I can use the door as a shield and take steps backward and I can play time for for myself okay in in my case <laughs> okay the, the hands mm. are the my concern mm. and as long as I can see his hands mm. I don't care what he wants to do with his feet mm. yes yes we noticed that when you came to the car you you touched the corner it, it, yeah the, uh, actually the trunk and not just touch it but I press it down yes. in the event that there was somebody mm. in the trunk so mm. Whoever is in there stays there. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, and while I approach the, um, yes. the that's just an abnormal tactic yes. that we do. Do you do that? Do you? No. I thought he meant I press down if there's he kidnapped somebody and somebody's in the trunk that needs help. I would feel them banging for help. He means in case this guy's just driving around with somebody in the trunk. So if he gets pulled over by the cops, he'll jump out and and will ambush the police officer. I've never heard of that. I I mean, I assume it's in the training because that happened, but unless they knew they were getting pulled over, who's stashing someone in the trunk to jump out and surprise the cops? Am I crazy? Is that what he's, that's what he's saying, right? He's not saying they, he kidnapped somebody, but I want them to stay there while I resolve what's happening up front so then I can save them safely. I have to watch that again. I'm sorry. The, the hands... Or concerned with the hands. With his feet. Mm. Yes, yes. You touched the corner. It, 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 yeah, the, uh, actually the trunk. And not just touch it, but I press it down yes. in the event that there was somebody mm. in the trunk. So mm. whoever is in there stays there. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, and while I approach the. Um, that's just a not normal tactic yes. that we do. Do you do that? Maybe do he you? means no, we don't do somebody that. got kidnapped. Okay. And he's like, stay there. And I'm going to handle this. I would alert you. Is it a case where there's a there's a, an attempt to hide something? His head is not moving, but you can tell his shoulder is moving. Then you're going to do whatever you have to do to make sure that you're prepared for any sudden moves out of the ordinary. Under natten har han nått av tråkiga nyheter oh, från no. jobbet där hemma. One of my officers uh, was involved in an OIS officer involved shooting. Mm. It's unfortunate, but the officer is okay. Okay, good. And that's important thing. I thought they were going to say one of his buddies got shot. That's why we use guns. That's not okay. I'm glad he's okay. All right, everybody, we will finish that episode tomorrow. There's a bunch of the Norden on YouTube. So assuming I'm not getting in trouble for talking over it, (laughs) uh, we're definitely going to watch more of it, but we'll make this a two-parter. There's a little bit left and uh, yeah, pace it out, watch more of it. And there's some other things I'd like to do too. Taffy for the prison Taffy episode, 1K subs uh, celebration is on the way. I don't know when it's all going to get here, probably around May 5th, but uh, I'll have that up as soon as I can. Take care of yourselves. 
Have a good day. Bye.